So we're out on this rather chilly fall day to test out the Thermobob mod. I'm also sort of testing out my GPS mount. Seems like what I did worked, but if you guys saw that video, I, I wouldn't recommend doing what I did. I would, I would find a better way. Uh, I could put a link to something that I would probably purchase uh, if I didn't think that this was going to work out, and I, I still might purchase uh, in the future anyway. But I've been out on the bike a couple times. Uh, I don't think I've ever been out when it's this cold, though, uh, since I did the mod. And it seems like at right around, uh, I guess I would say, KLR cruising speed, uh, 45, 50 miles an hour, uh, even like 60, I think. We're, we're running right around like 174 to 178 degrees. It's fall here in Wisconsin, so I can't tell you what it's going to run when it's 80 degrees outside. But uh, in like the 60s and uh, like mid 50s, it's going to run at maybe 189, something like that. Um, if you're if you're moving, if you're cruising, uh, we are headed to the Embarrass River ATV trails to test this out in some extremely slow moving trails. The temperature might affect that a little bit, the ambient temperature, uh, but probably not a whole lot. I do have the installation video. Uh, I can put a link down in the description for that if you guys want to see uh, the process of installing it. Uh, pretty easy to install and uh, pretty simple, really. The new Gen 3 kit gives you this Trail Tech uh, temperature gauge, which is kind of nice to have uh, on, the, on the Gen 3. I don't really want to get into too much of a debate on whether or not this is necessary. If you guys want to argue that, feel free to do that without any curse words down in the comment section. But all I'm going to do today is just kind of explain my reasoning for going with this. So like I said, we're at 177 now, cruising at about 50 miles an hour, not working the bike too hard. We will hit the trails and see how it performs on those. So one thing I will say about my rather goofy method of mounting my GPS on the KLR is it, uh, it does actually seem like it works pretty good. Before I had the little foam floaty pad underneath it, it seemed like that thing was vibrating really, really hard and fast. Uh, and now that I've got that behind it, it, it's actually quite smooth up there. Just about as smooth as the, the Tenere 700 is actually. So when I fired this thing up in the garage, uh, the temperature gauge, since it doesn't run off of the bike, it's just got a little button cell battery in it. Uh, it said it was, I think, 53 degrees, and it took, I don't know, uh, basically as long as it took me to, to get my cell phone hooked up to my Bluetooth communicator uh, to heat up to like 140 degrees. And uh, that's pretty darn quick when it's that chilly out, so I don't think there's any hesitation there. Uh, that, that seems like it warms it up nice and nice and quick. And just putting along on the trail here, looks like we're at what, 181? Oh, hello, deer. And I think that the Tenere would probably be right around like 174 at this speed, maybe a little warmer. One thing about the temperature gauge that I didn't really think about too much until I was out on my first night ride with it uh, is that it doesn't have anything to illuminate it since it just runs off a button cell. Um, that is kind of nice because obviously you don't have to run any electrical wiring to it. You just need the, the temperature gauge hookup, uh, the wire for that, and that's a, a pretty simple thing to install. So I don't know, if given the choice uh, for a light up one, I, I guess I would say I would probably just stick with this anyways. Um, probably shouldn't be staring down at the tiny numbers on your on your dash when you're riding around at night anyways. So not too big of a deal, uh, but something that I, I do continue to, I hope this isn't deep, I do continue to, uh, to look down and try to find when I'm riding at night. So I'm sure I'll get used to that eventually. And again, not a, not a big deal. Going a little slower here, 186. I guess we're getting a little bit of extra added cooling Ooh, from all the water here. Now I have done some some really really slow trails and then just almost kind of let it sit for a minute uh, just so it would do one full heat cycle um, and I just waited for that cooling fan to kick on. Uh, it seemed like everything worked very well there. Uh, I think it got up to like 200 and something and then came back down pretty quickly. Oh boy I hope that's not deep. Oh my gosh that was deep all right. <laughs> gonna be a cold ride home most of my gears waterproof though or at least it's supposed to be where are we at now down to 177 oh yikes 
Whoa. Ooh, maybe we are getting a little bit of liquid cooling from the environment. Whoa, I cannot wait to get these tires off of here. Get something better on. This was not the, the right way to take, was it? Huh. Not too late now. I know I should be up on my pegs, but I don't trust the slippery pegs nor the slippery tires near enough to do that. And I'm lost. <laughs> Not the direction I wanted to go. So after some slow putting around here, we're at 196, looks like. I don't think I've seen anything warmer than that. How many of you guys have the Thermobob on your bike? And is there anybody out there that put the Thermobob on their bike uh, before it was burning oil and then found that uh, sometime afterwards it, uh, it started to burn oil even with whoa what the heck uh, <laughs> some some quick gravel there it seemed like uh, and then found eventually that it that it still did uh, end up burning oil my guess is and, and again I'm, I'm no motorcycle mechanic and I've only done a, a small bit of research on this if you guys want to do more research whoa you can check out the the Wattman website. There's a pretty thorough, extremely thorough uh, write up on why you might want to switch to this. Having that temperature needle buried, just, I don't know, it never really sat right with me on the Gen 2. And when I bought that bike, it already had 9,000 miles on it and it was already burning oil. Um, I, you could probably make a case uh, for it still have, uh, being a good idea to do it, but I never did. Um, I think I put like 200 miles on this bike before I did it on, on here. And I'm super glad that I did and feel much better about it now that it's done. Of course, it's totally up to you. It's your bike, your decision. I'm not a motorcycle mechanic by any means. So take everything I've said with a large grain of salt and do your own research but I'm happy with mine and I would definitely recommend it to a friend what a beautiful day we'll say I'm riding purposely slow oh well, now we're up to 202 we'll say I'm riding purposely slow just to make sure that that temperature climbs for you so you can see what it does and, <laughs> and it has nothing to do with the fact that I'm afraid that I'm going to drop this since the trails are a little slick and these stock tires are slicker. Cooling fan kick on? Not yet. I do kind of wonder if I was on a Gen 2 right now without the Thermobob what that temperature gauge would be reading. Um, I think it only really climbed up to like halfway uh, before it would open the thermostat and dump a bunch of cold coolant right on the piston well not on the piston around the piston but I, I would bet that it was probably right around right around this temperature more or less um, and I, I definitely had the the cooling fan kick on on that bike a couple times while riding through some kind of slow hairy stuff and so I on the on the top end slow moving stuff I, I really doubt that you're running the bike any warmer um, but if you guys have more knowledge on that than I do, please feel free to let me know down in the comment box below. Other than that, guys, I say if you're uh, if you're a new KLR owner and you don't want to possibly have a cylinder that's out of round and start burning oil, in my opinion anyways, I think the Thermobob is a great way to avoid that. So I would definitely recommend it. Like I said, there'll be a link down in the description if you want to check that out. I also have a link to the video where I mounted the GPS and uh, where I did the, the mounting of the Thermobob and the Trail Tech temperature gauge.
So like I said, guys, if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you do hit that subscribe button. Click the bell after you're subscribed. I'll let you know anytime I put a video out. Other than that, guys, take care. Stay safe. Stay swanky. Get out and enjoy this beautiful world. Even if it is a little bit cold and wet, still good to get out here and enjoy it. And it looks a lot smaller on the TW. Yikes. Ah, Kalar doesn't care. No problem.